welcome back to my channel. I have an unboxing today. Um, I don't think I've actually mentioned this anywhere yet. So this is like a complete surprise unboxing, I'm hoping. Um, but I wanted to show that the packaging that it came in. So I'm guessing that from the title you will know what this is, but let's Let's just unbox. Um, all I've done is cut it open and take out the um, the invoice information. So all I've done is like cut, cut open the the bag that it came in. So it's come in a UPS Express box. Um, so it did come from UPS. Uh, it came via UPS. It took. Hang on, let me just do the uh, the pull tab. It took. How many days did it take? Let me just double check. I know it sat in like pre-shipment for a couple of days. Um, so that is something to note. Um, so I ordered on Friday and today is, what day is it? It's Wednesday. So I ordered last Friday, today is Wednesday and it's here. Um, but yeah, like I said, it did stay in pre-shipment for, like, I think they um, they marked it dispatched on the Saturday. But of course, it didn't actually get collected until Monday. So, oh, okay. So, <clears throat> oh, wow, okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, this is cool. Okay, and I've got a little envelope. I'm presuming this has got my invoice in. Yes. Okay. So yes, this has got um, this has got my invoice in it, but it's a lovely envelope. Look at this. Um, and you can maybe guess why I want to actually share this video as like a permanent video. I don't want to just do it as stories. So, um. If you have been following me on my Instagram, you will know I've been adding a few superior labour items to my collection. And so far I've bought from um, Libraries and Archives Paper Co. Um, Libraries and Archives Co, I think, or is it Libraries, Libraries and Archives Paper Co? I can't remember, um, but I will link them down below, um, which is the UK stockist for superior labour. I don't know of any other UK stockist. Um, I think Claire is the only one and she's absolutely fantastic. And she's actually going to be ordering me another piece that I am also going to be buying from her. Um, and I've also ordered from 22 Market, which is, they're based in Canada. Again, fantastic service. Um, but I recently, I, I kind of, I was ordering from... Um, other companies from like retailers because I didn't actually know that you could order from the Superior Labour Direct and I don't know if that's because I think when I first was when I was looking at seriously buying um I think their website was moving so like I just assumed that you couldn't actually buy from them and so I found other retailers that I could get it from um and then they recently had a sample sale and I was like oh so you can actually buy from them and I thought, oh, well, maybe it's only sample sale stuff. But then I found that, no, you can actually just buy normal items from them. So I wanted to add this item to my collection. And when I found that you could buy actually directly from Superior Labour, I also found how much cheaper it is to buy directly from the Superior Labour. Um, and I, I'm not going to do this for every item because I do still want to support like the local retailers. Um but this item is something that I wanted, but it's not something that I was desperate to have quickly. Like it's not something that I was desperate to. It was, it was, it was quite low on my priority list. Um, and it's only because I found it and I sort of thought, you know what, I will, I'll get it because I wanted to see what buying from directly from the superior label was like. So. I will link um, the website down below. So it's a little bit confusing because it's actually, although it is the Superior Labour, it is actually their official website, but it's called um, Nap Village, Nap Inc, um, and Nap Dog. So 
like I just thought that they were another retailer, but it turns out no, it is actually the actual company. The super the superior labor is their actual um website. So I found it a little bit confusing, but you know, that's only because I'm not I haven't even though I've been in the Facebook groups for a while, I haven't like actively done a lot of research into it, I think. Um but yeah, so you can order from them direct. Um as I say, I ordered this on Friday. It arrived and I ordered it sort of Friday morning UK time, I think it was. Let me just double check. Um, yeah, so I ordered it Friday morning UK time. Obviously, Japan's quite far ahead of us in in um, in time zones. So it would have been like the end of the day for them, probably. So I didn't expect it to actually ship. But then it shipped Saturday. Um and yeah well it, it got marked to ship Saturday and then like I said it was collected by UPS on the Monday so let's get into what this actually is so it came with this sheet of stickers which these are like vinyl stickers I love a vinyl sticker and um, I'm actually I'm I've been wanting to make vinyl stickers myself so I'm very happy with these okay so in a cellophane bag and it's got a little, a little sticker there. I'm going to try and keep that. And then inside, cloth bag. And a cute little leaflet. Oh, this is nice. Oh, look. Oh, I like this. Yeah, so then you've just got like the details of the actual company on the back there. Um, yeah. So, have you guessed what it is yet? I don't know. Do you know, when I've seen people unboxing these, I haven't ever seen them in a canvas bag. So that is something to note if you get it direct. Can you hear? <laughs> Here you go. So I ordered the pen roll. Um, I got it in the natural colour. So let's have a look. We've got the tags there. There's like an information tag and then the actual um, the price information there. I will go into what that converted to in a second. But yeah, so I went for the natural. It's actually a lot more orange than I was expecting. I was thinking it would be more of a neutral, um, like a lighter color. I don't mind, because I did actually consider, I couldn't decide whether to get the, the natural or to get the, the light brown. So I don't mind, to be fair. Um, but yeah, I was expecting more of a neutral. So the leather has got some pebbly texture. Um, you've got the label there with the stitching and then it has got the, the little stamp up in the corner. And then you've got the strap. It does have that, that squeak to it. Hello guys. So it is actually several days later <laughs> from the last clip that you saw of me unboxing um this pen roll i um i wanted to double check with superior labor that i got the right color which i have um it's it, you can tell because there's no dye on the inside um on the inside of the leather so it's definitely the natural one they've basically just said that it'll just be that this bit of leather before it was sewn up will have patinaed more than um the other ones that you see around um which is fine. I'm quite happy with that. I just, I wanted to double check that I'd definitely been given the right colour because I didn't want to be sharing with you guys that this is how my natural one looked if then um, I hadn't actually got the got the natural one. Um, so yeah, and to be fair, this colour um, is actually, I think if you look at the pictures of the pen roll that's got the blue and white stripe fabric on the back, this is the colour of the leather on those. So um I think it's probably just this batch has um, been allowed to patina a little bit more. So 
um, yeah, the pen roll. It's absolutely beautiful. I also wanted to try and film um, in more natural daylight. When I was filming the unboxing, it was gone eight o'clock at night. It was really quite late um, and the sun was sort of setting. So it was looking a little bit more orange than it actually is in real life. I am struggling to get the camera to actually truly show it off, to be honest. It's coming up darker than it actually is. It's kind of a, it's a light caramel brown, I would say. So it actually reminds me, let me just grab it. It's quite close to my undyed. So the actual color is really quite close to my undyed. And obviously my undyed is, um, well, I got it in November, so it's like half a year old now. Um, and you can see there the difference between how much it is patinaed over that time. Um, but yeah, so it just reminds me of like um, patinaed leather, essentially. So um, let me just move that out of the way, actually, because it's too large. So I wanted today, to, as part of that video, to go through... Um, what I'm going to be using this for because I don't think in the clip I actually said <laughs> um, before I cut it off because I was like oh I need to check that I've got the right one here um, so I'm actually going to be using this not for fountain pens so I know um, a lot of people use this pen roll to keep fountain pens in and they use it as an everyday pen case and things I'm actually not going to be using it for that and that's why I mentioned that I didn't really want to pay like the amount that this would cost to buy directly in the UK. So I don't think I even mentioned how much it ended up costing. I think I showed the label, but I didn't actually end up, end up mentioning how much it cost. So um, it actually cost with postage 89 pounds um, direct from Superior Labour. The I've seen it at various prices in other countries. So like Nomado, I think they have it as a hundred and 15 euros or something like that um and then um like 22 uh, 26 market i think i've got it at 20 uh, i've got it at 112 dollars no 120 canadian i think it was maybe um i think bon bon have maybe got it for 112 american dollars there's so there's so many different prices out there um and like claire she'd got it at 135 pounds because of course she's got to add on VAT as well on top of anything else so because this is going to just be for um items that yes I use but it's not going to get every single day use I didn't want to spend um 135 pounds on it basically I just I just could not bring myself to spend that kind of money so um, I had been looking for them secondhand for quite a long time and I hadn't been able to find one. And then, yeah, when I realised that I could buy direct from Superior Labour, um, I thought, yeah, I'll do that then. And, you know, it, it was one of those, if it gets customs when it arrives, that's fine. Because even buying it from there, the amount of, cust the amount of VAT that I would have been charged wouldn't have been as much as buying it from a UK or an EU retailer. Um, so... This is actually going to be my sketching kit, um, like my art kit, essentially. So I think a couple of times in the past on this channel, if you scroll way back to when I was doing like Inktober and stuff like that, I shared like the tools that I was using and things. And I'm not going to lie, I don't really, they haven't changed that much. <laughs> I use kind of the same stuff. Um, I, I basically found the things I liked and... I don't deviate from it too much when it comes to actual um, like art materials. So this is going to be um, holding my main kit of art materials essentially. And um, not all of them though, um, I will come to that. So I, I just wanted a pen roll because I've previously had them in a little, um, it's a high tide pen case and it's made of plastic and I cram it, I cram it, I really do cram it shut. Um, and because it's made of plastic, every time I use it, I'm thinking, oh God, is this gonna split? So then I don't put as much in it. Um, and then if I put things in a bigger pen case, I tend to carry too much and then I'm rummaging around to find things. 
So I wanted a way to store my sketching materials in a way that I could see where everything was and just pull out what I needed basically. So um, this is only going to be for sketching and drawing. The other item that I mentioned, I think, when I filmed the other day that I want to add to my collection is actually going to be to store my travel watercolour palette and the bits that I need for that. Um, so you won't see me put my watercolour palette in here. I know a lot of people do put their travel watercolour palettes in here. Um, I will just get mine and show you why I'm not going to be putting it in here. And this will also explain why I need another piece to put it in. Um, so this is what I currently keep my travel watercolour palette in. Um, this was a pouch that I got when I did a workshop a few years ago. And um, I just keep my bits and bobs in here. But my travel watercolour palette is actually this one, which is not a standard size. So this is a schminky um, uh, pan, half pan, quarter pan watercolour palette. But it was a limited edition with a collaboration with a shop called Wet Paint, based in the US. And it has an extra row of pants. Um, so it is wider than normal. So it will not actually fit in this pen roll. Hence why... Um, it's not going in here and why I have another item <laughs> that I have measured multiple times. I've measured, I've measured my palette. I've measured against what it says, on, the sizes online. So I'm really hoping that it will fit. Um, and I'm sure you can probably actually guess from me even just mentioning that what item it might be from the superior label. But right. So this is going to be drawing materials, essentially. Um, and I have my favourite bits just in a big pile over here. I normally actually keep them. Let me show you. So in my top drawer of my desk, I have this. I have these like container things. And um, normally they are all shelved in here. <laughs> and there are. Um, and in here is like. Sorry, I'll stop. I'll stop rattling. So in here is a combination of like planner bits and also art and drawing bits. Um, and yeah, they just go in here basically. And I, I just, I feel like that's fine for at the moment because of COVID, we're not going anywhere. Um, but when, the, you know, things are starting to change, things are starting to open up. So I, um, I want to have something to carry them around with me in um, and we're hoping to go on holiday soon and I want to take this with me on holiday as well um, and actually once I've filled this up I might just also just give you a quick rundown of what um, I am using as a sketchbook at the moment because that's something that I uh, I have recently changed so right so let's get into what is going in here so I just like I say it's just piled over here <laughs> it's just a big pile um, I'll go, I'll do pencils first so that, um, cause I think I'm going to put them over here. Um, yeah. Um, and there are actually a few things that are on their way to me that I'm hoping will arrive at some point so that I can, um, so that I can put them in here as well, but, um, they're coming from China. But I will mention those in a second. So, um, the main pencils that I use, the main pencil that I actually use when I am sketching is a Palomino. So this one is a Palomino Blackwing. This is the Pearl. It's worn off because it gets used that much. Um, and I have quite a few of these. Um, they are, they're my favourite of the Blackwing pencils. The Pearl is my, like, first choice. Um... If I had to, yeah, if I could only use one black wing pencil, it would be the Pearl. Um, I don't have the nib protectors on them, mainly because I can't bring myself to spend £12 for a little bit of metal. Um, but, yeah, I just, and also, to be quite frank, I just think, well, I just sharpen it. <laughs> if it, if it, if it, you know, if the nib breaks, I just sharpen it. Um, I know they are expensive, but they're not so expensive that I begrudge sharpening it a couple of times. Um, so yeah, I don't keep the nib protectors on. Occasionally, um, you might have just seen then, if, I am, if I'm carrying it not in a case or anything, like if I were to, this one was recently on the side of my sketchbook, um, I actually put these on and these are knitting needle, um, like end tip protectors. And they are incredibly cheap and they're rubber 
um, and yeah, I just I just think that they're a good they're a good option. Um, I mean, never say never. Who knows? I might one day treat myself to some uh, some tip protectors, but for now, I'm not that bothered. The next one I do have is the matte black Blackwing. This one is the softer lead, so um, this one is definitely. Um, more of like a, a shading, softer, smudgy pencil, whereas the pearl is harder. Um, I've actually never tried the natural or the the grey one, what's it called? The 60, 602, 620. Um, I kind of, I do want to try those eventually. I've only ever tried these two, but um, I do want to try them to sort of see what they're like. But um, yeah, so they're the two pencils that I mainly use for sketching. I have one other pencil that I use fairly regularly. It's not necessarily this one. Um, I basically, it's just always a an H pencil. So um, it would, I, I would actually prefer it to be a 4H. Um, I don't, I've actually, I can't find my 4H pencil, my actual like wooden 4H pencil. Um, and I use this for when I'm watercoloring. So I essentially, when you are watercoloring, if you want to, um, do a lot of, like sketch out a rough and then um, go over it with a very faint line of paint just to um, get it in there without leaving an actual without needing an actual pencil line on there um, an H pencil is easier to remove if you use a softer lead um, it kind of works into the paper too much so it's too hard to lift off whereas a hard hard lead does not work into the paper um, and if you, as long as you sketch very lightly, you can actually usually, even when you've put a little bit of watercolour paint over the top, you can usually remove it. So that's what I use for that. Um, and that's just going to go in there. Then I've got one mechanical pencil with me. This is a Kohenur Hardmouth, um, and this is a clutch pencil. So it has a, um, has a solid stick of lead in there. Um, and this one, again, is kind of like a um, one that I would use for sketching. It's, um, I believe it's got a 2B lead in there, I think. Um, but yeah, and it's just, it's a, it's quite comfortable and it's just quite hardy. And sort of if I feel like I am in a situation where I maybe don't want to use these two in case I drop them or break because of I'm more bothered about dropping them than about knocking the tip off because if you drop them obviously you break the lead within the pencil um so if I want to use something that's just got a little bit more heft to it then um that's what I will pick up then um I have not technically a pencil this is a pastel pencil so this is a, a Conti um pastel pencil and I mainly just use this for shading, to be honest. I will just use it for shadows and things. It's um, incredibly dark um, and also quite, a, it's quite a hard pastel. It's not a soft pastel. Um, so it's quite good for adding in shading and stuff. Um, the only thing about these is they are too wide for most pencil sharpeners. So um, I have to use something else, which I will actually let's just show you so i do have to carry a pen knife with me to sharpen it um but i mean it's handy to have a pen knife anyway for this sort of thing because you can sharpen the other pencils say um my pencil sharpener broke or i lost it or whatever i could sharpen any of these really with the pen knife um so i'll come to where that's going to go in a second and then the final sort of this sort of thing is um this guy so this is a tombow mono zero a razor and it's a teeny tiny teeny teeny tiny little um point and um i use this for when i want to put in highlights and things so i'm going to put that in with the pencils just because it kind of goes together then let's talk about the stuff that goes with pencils actually the paraphernalia and then we'll do the pens so um i have a few things that i use um I basically, yeah, I, you know, I went through so many different brands of everything, trying to find the things that I wanted, and eventually I just settled on these, and I don't tend to reach for anything else, to be honest. So um, you might be thinking, Oxo, really? You use Oxo? <laughs> no. This is what I keep my um, pencil sharpener in. So this is a brass bullet pencil sharpener. Um, there's some some shavings in there. Um, and it's a, a very heavy-duty 
pencil sharpener and I like it because the the shape of it makes it really easy to hold while you're while you're while you're sharpening um and it's incredibly durable very heavy um and just yeah it's just really good I really like this one um and it's you know a traditional pencil sharpener in there you can replace the the blaze whenever you need um and I keep it in here because this is where I sharpen shavings into when I'm out and about um I did empty it the other day because I otherwise I think it would have gone everywhere. I mean, when I'm actually at home, I sharpen into a little pot and then put it in a bin. But um, yeah, when I'm out and about, um, it goes in here. When I want to erase, um, I have a couple of different options. So I have obviously the tiny little Tombow Mono, but I also have this one. So this is the, the Tombow Mono Light. And I specifically use the light one. You might have seen me use this in videos using my Tomo River paper notebooks and, and planners. And I use this for the same reason. Um, I like to use textured paper, um, watercolour paper, cartridge paper. And if you use a traditional rubber eraser and you rub too hard, you can actually ruin the texture of the paper. You can ruin the nap. You can actually tear it. Um, to the point where then if you paint over the top of it it's it messes up the watercolor it just does not look it just does not look nice um whereas this one is quite gentle so i like to use the light one and in fact that will fit quite nicely in there um and then the other eraser that i have and again this is again to be a very gentle eraser and that is this one which is a um a faber castell um kneaded art eraser so um or putty eraser you sometimes hear them called um so it's a very very soft eraser you can actually bend it into lots of different shapes and take off just what you need um and i'm not particularly loyal to the fact that it's faber castell the only reason that i will only use these ones now is because they come in a case um they're actually to be fair i haven't had to buy any replacements since i bought this one um it came in a pack of three so i've actually got three of these and if I were to buy another um, putty eraser, I would just put it into this box. But I highly recommend just getting hold of one of these just because it comes in the box. Because if you have ever used a, a kneaded putty eraser, you will know that they melt and they go everywhere. So you do kind of need to keep them wrapped up and contained. And then, like I say, I've got my little pen knife. So these are going to go into the big car compartment over here. Um, I'm not actually sure how they are going to fit, which way around I'm going to put them. Like that, maybe? Not fit down the side. Yeah. So there's a little bit of space there for me to put anything else in that I might need to. Um, and it's a little bit rattly, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So, pens. So this is actually the area where they're are going to be a couple of changes coming soon um so like i said i have ordered um i've got a couple of things coming and they are pens so um if you have watched my old videos um or any videos about my book spine art you'll know that i use a fountain pen to draw them to draw them um i use this kueka perkyo and i use platinum carbon ink in it um which is why I use a cheap fountain pen, um, because it can completely trash your, your pens. So um, I just use one of these and it's a fine nib, but I can make it even finer if I use it upside down. Um, I can press on it a little bit harder to get a thicker line. Um, so that's kind of my pen of choice at the moment. But what I have got coming is um, I've got um, a couple of Jin Hao pens, which are Chinese fountain pens. Um, they've got gold nibs, but I'm not kidding, guys. They were less than a fiver each. Um, I bought them on AliExpress. I think shipped, they were less than a fiver each. So I've, I've ordered um, a medium and a broad. Um, so they're coming. And then I've also ordered a Duke Fude pen. Um, I think it's a Duke 20 something, 205 or something like that. It's got a number. Um, and it's a Fude pen. So it's got a bent nib, um, which should also give me variations in line width. Um, so the... The Jin Hao's, because they've got a gold nib, gold is a much much more flexible nib than steel. 
Um, so you can get variation in line width with those. And then, um, yeah, I've got the, the Fude coming as well, which that one does have a steel nib, but it is a, um, but like I say, it's a bent nib, so you can get variation in line width with that. So I will be adding those in here when they arrive. Um, the next sort of, the only other kind of like, um, well, no, not the only other. I think, have I got a brush over here? I might have a brush over here. Um, I have a brush pen. So this is a, a Pentel brush pen. Um, I can't actually remember what it's called, like the official name. They're really cool though, because it's actually refillable. So um, you just get these little cartridges and you can refill it. Um, so, and it is an actual brush. They're, they are bristles. It's not a, um, it's not a felt tip. So, um, and it's a really expressive pen. So you can get fine detail from the very point of the point of the brush down to really swooping fine detail, uh, really swooping expressive um, drawings with those. So I keep that in there. Then I have a Uni Posca. This might not stay in here because this I only really use if I am actually doing watercolours so it might actually go into my watercolour kit um and i basically it's a um a pin liner so it's the it's the teeny tiny tip um and i just use this for highlights when i am watercolouring um i do a combination of watercolour and colour pencil so kind of like a mixed media situation um so you need something like an acrylic paint pen that will actually go over both of those different textures um if you want to add some highlights in so that's what i use for that but like i said this might actually go into my watercolor kit so i might set that aside actually which actually frees up more room for those fountain pens when they arrive um and then finally i have these little guys so um i don't i don't i don't tend to rely on these um i tend to rely on the fountain pen more but I have these in here for if I do want to do something um, that is a little bit more detailed and I just can't be asked with the fountain pen at the moment um, because the fountain pen does need cleaning out very regularly because of the type of ink I use in it. Um, and obviously if it runs out, then you know, I don't carry a bottle of ink around with me. So if it runs out, then I've got these as a backup essentially. So um, I've got three microns um, in the three, I believe these are the three smallest sizes. So a 005, a 01 and a 02. Um, they aren't actually, those numbers aren't actually indicative of the line width though. If you actually flip them over a little bit, you can actually see here, it actually tells you what the line width is. So um, the 005 is actually a 0 0.2, the 01 is a 0 0.25 and the 02 is a 0 0.3 millimeter line. So I have those, like I say, just to be like a backup pen really. And also sometimes you just don't want to faff with fountain pens. And then the final pen that I'm going to put in here is uh, my Sakura Pigma brush pen. So this, like the um, Pentel, is a um, brush pen, but this one's actually a felt tip. So it is solid um, and it also has a very, very fine point. So it's great for really small details and it's also a much smaller point so um, you, you you still get the expressiveness that you do with the Pentel but in a, a smaller smaller package essentially um, and yeah that's it like I feel like um, I've gone from being like the art material hoarder to being someone who uses relatively little when it comes to um actually drawing and things nowadays it is one of those things though when you find the things that you like you just tend to stick with it you don't faff around and find a load of other stuff and keep trying loads of stuff you once you've yeah if it ain't broke don't fix it essentially isn't it so that's what's going in here um I'm sort of i don't know whether to i see people close these up in a couple of different ways. I see people fold it in half like this, which, I don't know, this feels kind of bulky. It feels kind of big, it's kind of wide. Um, and then I saw, I think it was Eunice on BK. She, um, ah, that's a bit, that's a, it's a bit of a slimmer profile. She folded it like this so that it goes into like three. Um, You'll see why I'm interested in a deep in a in a thinner profile in a second. Yeah, I feel like that sits. Um, it takes up less space, um, so it's maybe a better a better option. So I did say obviously that I would just quickly go through um, 
what I'm using for my sketchbook and it's this guy so yeah I'm using a traveler's notebook <laughs> um which I kind of think yeah it's a bit of a I've had this sat um since I got I originally bought this to be like my travel journal and then of course I got my A6 um sheep sparrow and this has just been kind of set sat um I do a bit of creative journaling every so often in it because of covid obviously we've not been going anywhere so I kind of wanted to give it a home I saw a lot of people using theirs and I just wanted to basically find a purpose for it essentially um so yeah I've put my sketchbook in here so this is a camel traveler's company notebook um and I just have I have the green the green elastic on it that um that came on the packaging this is just a button um I used to use these on um pouches that I used to make and it's just it's literally like a sewing button it's a wooden Heart. and then on the bookmark I just have a this is a Pandora charm that my auntie got me um, and I just thought it kind of went with it really well so I keep that on there um, inside I have one of these little one of the little um, travelers company clear pockets and I just shove stuff in here the stuff that is in here is quite old actually the um, the bits and bobs they were put in there to be like used in creative journaling and I've just not got around to it um, so then I have a I have one of these um, craft folders again to hold bits and bobs really um, on the front that's a sticker from oh what's her name Sarah Sarah something she has a YouTube channel um, and an Instagram um, she's German she lives in Berlin I can't remember her surname is that a bit better? Yeah, there you go. Oh, Sarah Faber. That's it. Sarah Faber. Um, actually, and that gives you a bit of a better idea of the colour of the pen roll. There you go. That's more of an accurate colour of what the pen roll looks like. It's this caramelly, light caramel kind of colour. Um, but yeah, so I just have that there. And then this is just, you know, my, my handle that I've done um, with my Dymo label maker. Inside I just have, again, some more old bits and bobs. These little pockets, I, these little envelopes, I have in loads of different notebooks and things. They're by Midori and they are really helpful for just gathering really small bits of ephemera when you're traveling. Um, so I like to keep those in there. Got some random scraps of paper. Ooh, that's from my, that's an old event that I did with my Etsy team. You know what, I'm gonna put that one back in because it's really pretty. Let's, let's put you back in. Here we go. And then what have I got in the back? So I've got some grid paper. Um, again, I always like to keep things like that actually in there because they are useful. Some washi tape samples. Um, and then I do have another Midori pocket on the back. So the actual notebook that I'm using for sketching at the moment is this one, which um, I haven't actually told her that I've done this yet. <laughs> and speaking of um, an Etsy event that we did, so this notebook is actually by my friend Michaela. So if you saw my um my COVID um diaries notebook that I was using, let me grab it actually. Here you are. Um so this is what I was using last year to record what was happening in the first lockdown um because of coronavirus. I had had this made for we were going to be going to Florida last year and it got cancelled. Um, it got cancelled literally like a few days before and like but I'd had this I had I'd had this little notebook made by Michaela and she basically um, she hand paints the bottom and then she types whatever message you want on the front um, with her typewriter which is called Dorothy it's lovely um, and all of Michaela's products are made with offcuts from the um, from the fashion industry so all of the paper is made from offcuts so um this paper on the outside is really beautiful like hand pressed paper you can see it's it's very pretty paper um and then she uses cartridge paper on the inside so high quality recycled cartridge paper um and this notebook was actually an a5 one that i had that i hadn't brought myself to use yet because it was so pretty um and I decided that actually, do you know what? I'm going to put it in my traveler's notebook. So I did trim 
a slip off the side but Makeda will do custom sizes so if you do want a um, a notebook from her because they are beautiful like they would they are beautiful journaling notebooks I would highly highly recommend you go and check out her shop obviously it'll be linked down below um, but if you give her a message and ask for a custom request she can make them to a custom size for you um, like this one is A6 to go in my A6 um, in my A6 notebook and um, yeah I just I sent her the dimensions and she made it to the right size so um, definitely definitely reach out if there is a particular um, size that you are after but yeah this is like an a5 one just trimmed down essentially there's just yeah like an inch maybe off the side um and this one wasn't a personalized one because this was one that i got free as part of an event we were doing um but it is beautiful i just love the colors on the front and um, i've stuck a little um book plate in the front i got these from um claire from libraries and archives paper co when i ordered from her she popped a few in um my order and they are really pretty they've got some um they've got some foiling on there um and i just i like to like i like to write the date that i've started and finished a sketchbook basically so um i've just got that tucked in the front and then yeah it's ready it's ready to go i've not used it yet I'm actually thinking that the, the Traveller's Notebook size is going to be the perfect size for me because, of course, I do book spines, so it's the right dimensions for me to do a book spine a page. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting, like, delving into this lovely new sketchbook. Um, but, yeah, so I think that's that's kind of it. I, I just kind of wanted to give you a little, a little update on this little guy. Um, and also fill up this guy obviously but yeah this is going to be like my new little sketching sketching set for when i when i go around um i think it'll be yeah i can't wait to see how this patina's even further obviously um and gets marks on it from me using it and ink on it and you know all of the all of the usual stuff it'll get um it definitely won't look this pristine for long um but yeah so that is my little, that's the unboxing and setting up of my sketch pen roll and a little, a little quick look into my current sketchbook setup. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like and subscribe um, and, you know, hit the bell if you want to and all of that sort of thing. If you, um, if you like planning, stationery, that kind of content, um, art content as well, I'm hoping to bring some of that back though. I, I just get so self-conscious when I'm doing art stuff on video. Like, ask me to whittle away about planners for like days and I could do that. But ask me to actually draw on camera and I just get so nervous about it. Um, I think it's because that thing of, oh, what if it goes wrong? Um, but yeah. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. This video is probably now really long. Um, but I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you soon. Bye.